shell to hit it and try and penetrate it, but says, no, my best line of defense is pushing my defense out and making it explode before it comes close enough to cause damage. The initial solution is to add thick steel plates that protrude several inches from the vehicle's side. If you push the explosion out a little further, the amount of lethality that's essentially contained by that RPG is limited. Although it proves effective, the add-on steel is an age-old solution with a predictable result. Not only are the steel plates cumbersome, they're heavy. So armor manufacturers work toward a more lightweight solution. And this is the unlikely answer. This is the Kevlar netting for our RPG defeat solution. Netting fitted with small metal knobs. These are the metal nodes, which actually do the damage. They're working on affixing these to the nets, and once they're on, we've got a full and complete net, and we pack it out to, to meet up with the rest of the kit. Which is a simple metal frame, and that's it. Imagine this wrapped all the way around the vehicle. An RPG will come driving in here, and it passes through the netting, and these nodes cut into the cone. It shorts out the fuse, defeats the bomb. It hits the side of the truck, but there's no explosion, meaning that everybody inside still can drive away. At least that's how the netting works during initial tests. When units are sent to the field and assembled around MRAPs, they do not instill much confidence in the soldiers who rely on them for protection. A majority of us, myself included, were very skeptical of, you know, string connected with plastic and a metal frame was going to do any good as far as stopping a, a rocket propelled grenade. For Lieutenant Matthew Ward, the real test comes in Iraq where he and his convoy are attacked as they deliver Iraqi election ballots to civilian headquarters. The trail vehicle sustained two direct hits from RPGs, uh, broadside hits. When Ward reaches the trail,